Hi, Sophie. Welcome to the podcast. How did they get there? Hi, Nishant. Thanks for inviting me on your podcast. Do you mind quickly introducing yourself uh, and your company to our listeners? I am a kick-ass woman in tech entrepreneur and an ambassador of STEM who is very passionate about pushing for girls to go into STEM. I believe that technology is an important part of modern life and that every child and woman should have access to it. I am successfully running my tech business, promoting STEM and teaching kids how to code. I am also the founder of the amazing project known as Beyond Rubik's Cube and one of Ireland's flagship tech startup Tecundu. I am also an international speaker on business, tech and innovation, and a big role model for all young girls who want to get into the tech world. Thanks, Sophie. That sounds amazing. Do you love what you do? I love what I do. There is never a dull moment when you are running a successful business, teaching kids and giving talks about technology around the world. That is definitely fascinating. So what led you to work in the tech sector? My parents instilled in me and my brother at a very young age that you had to be happy in your job. I grew up with this syndrome, I had to have a job I loved. I did not even think about computer science as a career. It was when I had to register for a major at university and I only thought about the STEM courses. I did not have an idea of what computer science was all about. Yeah, that is some really good advice to be instilled. You've had a diverse career path then. Uh, what has been a driving factor for you? I always try to be a good learner and I always try to stay up to date with all technology. This is a good way to stay fresh in a job as well. People always tell me, how are you an it -er and also a lawyer? Those two are not even similar to each other, but they're not similar to each other as well. In many trades, you are always working with legal documents as well. Wow. So, you know, across the different job roles that you've had um, and initiatives that you have undertaken, how do you continue to adapt and learn? I am always interested in new technologies. I follow many new technologies, and if I see new technology being introduced, for example, when I have a job as an IT specialist, I want to learn a bit of the system and more on. If it was not that at the time, but it's available now then, I will be, hey, I want to go learn that. Fascinating. Um, so moving into the next section uh, of our interview, uh, what is a book you have most given as a gift and why? Oh, there's a hard one because I have given so many books as gifts. The one book which I have given most as a gift is The Art of Happiness. It's not the best-selling book in the world, but it's one of the most beautiful books I have read and I love how it talks about happiness and how people need the balance of everyday life. Oh, that's great. I'll add that to my reading list as well. Um, how has a failure or, or an apparent failure uh, set you up for later success? I don't believe in failure. Everything I do, I put it out with the best intentions and that helps with failures. I think if you're doing something in the right way, and if you're putting the right sort of intentions into it, then I don't really believe in failure. Things don't always work out, but you have to be strong and learn from this, and it is just the way life is. Do you have uh, any unusual or absurd thing uh, that you do? Well, I love to do things in circles. I have a thing for numbers. I really love the Futurama number 12, the legendary number six, and I try to do things in sixes wherever possible. <laughs> that's, that's great. Um, is there any learning uh, that you still carry on from school or college? I think a lot of the school and college learning just taught me the basics and the fundamentals, so I really try and avoid using them. And also, school and college didn't help me get my first job. I had to do that all on my own. So, I think probably, when you are on your own and you're earning your first money, you get a lot more out of school and college than when you're looking for jobs. So, you know, you've been in the tech industry. Um, and uh, have you come across any specific stereotype uh, you hear in your profession uh, or the area of expertise? That women aren't as good at STEM as men. Oh, uh, yeah. That's a bad stereotype. Uh, do not agree with that at all. You know, so you are do busy, uh, you know, running your business, teaching kids how to code and doing all these awesome things. Uh, when you feel overwhelmed or unfocused or, you know, even lost focus temporarily, 
What do you do to bring that focus back in? I remember this is a very good question. I feel like you can always reground yourself. I don't know a focus couldn't be maintained because it's really about how long you're willing to keep enduring the periods in between when you are actually working or producing something. Knowing what you know today, what would you instruct your younger self? My younger self would say listen more to your gut and find people to support you. Know that it's okay to change direction and that I could build myself up and not anyone else. You know, in the current times of COVID um, and, um, uh, you know, the uncertainty that we all are seeing, uh, the students who are graduating, the professionals who are looking to private career. So if you had to give some advice to a graduate and professional, you know, looking to get into your sector, uh, what advice would you give them? A graduate now should learn to listen to their gut and make sure that they value talking to people who don't have experience as much as to those who have experience. Remember that you have something that they wish they had, but in time you will get as much experience as they do. An experienced professional should take on at least one new challenge every year, preferably that you're not trained in, but know that you can accomplish. If you're not expanding your skill set or understanding of how the industry works, then you're not going to be a good influencer. Oh, that's some great advice. Um, I'm sure our listeners are going to you know, take that on. So now we've discussed our journey so far. Where do you want to get to from here? I am very proud of what I've accomplished so far. I have created voice for myself in the world of technology. I've had the support of family, friends, and community that has allowed me to do that. But I would love to do something that makes the world a better place. I would like to create things that help people in their lives and force me to evolve to meet that new challenge. Uh, that sounds amazing. So hey, thanks for joining us uh, for this interview. I'm sure our listeners uh, will enjoy our discussion. Um, any last words uh, you want to share before we finish? I just want to say do what you love. It's very easy to get caught up in other things along the way. You might not like your job. You might feel frustrated with your current situation. But if you focus on doing what you love and finding your passion, you will find success. That's great. Thanks a lot, Sophie. Thanks, Nisha. Hey, listeners. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Would love to hear your feedback in the comments section. And if you enjoyed it, please subscribe.